Hey there, so today we have another review. This is one for the geeks, for the Cicerones, blah, 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 the old money people. This is, uh, Teak, I want to say Teakston or Peculiar. Teakston is British. Uh, it's out of North Yorkshire. Uh, it's actually imported by uh, Iron Horse Beverage of Melville, so I didn't actually know there's a distributor that was, you know, importing British beer. Um, has been out of the U.S. market for 10 years, and now it's back. So this is uh, under BJCP as quote-unquote old ale. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, old ale in BGC BJCP. Uh, it is... Uh, what else do I have to say about the beer? You know, this is one of those beers that, like, you know, studying for a Cicerone and stuff, you just read about the beer. And under Old Ale, you just remember, like, commercial examples. And this is a pretty easy name to remember. Teakston Old Familiar. Old Peculiar. Old Peculiar, sorry. And, um, I don't know. So what is this? It's very low carb, as you can see. All right, very low carb. Um, yeah. So... 5.6%, so which is actually like, you think old ale is like, oh man, it's gonna be like 9% like a barley wine. Uh, no, uh, this I think, actually I was on Beer Advocate, someone mentioned it's like a little bit like an overstrength dark mild than really true, true old ale, which is adjacent-ish to a uh, barley wine. So yeah, we'll see, but anyway, we'll see what the beer is, right? The beer comes in a nice kind of a medium brown, light to medium brown color. Uh, can't tell if it's clear, but nice tan head. Again, not too much carb on it. This beer you would find on Caskin, uh, UK. So, mm. yeah. So, big rich maltiness, a caramel, tootsie roll, rye bread, a little bit of kind of like, yeah, that kind of just like toasted brownish crusty bread thing. Also, a little bit of ester, a little bit of like light cherry character, a little bit of like cocoa dusting too. Um, sort of makes sense with a little bit of that, uh, color. Oh yeah, that's just a rusty old, you know, British ale. Uh, really light in the carb, obviously. Nice bulk character. Mm. Wow, five six, nice and sessionable, nice malt forward beer. So follows with rich breadiness, um, toasted character, a little bit of light cocoa, a little bit of like caramel, almost butterscotchy sweetness in the middle. But then envelops onto this really proper British, uh, I think it's Fogel Hops, uh, woodsy, titanic, lingering bitterness. Man, this would be so good in cask. And honestly, I'm a little bit embarrassed. I pulled it right out of the fridge. This beer really needs to be served around cask temperature. So I'm thinking around like, um, geez, uh, 45, 50, more like 50 probably, 48 degrees. I said the fridge probably at like 38. So, solid ten, almost a solid 10 degrees warmer. That's nice. They say premium ale. Serve cool, not cold, right? Whereas American beers, everything's cold, 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 cold. Mountains cold, blue cold. Blue mountains cold, blah, blah, blah. So, mm. a little better as it warms up. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, boy, this just takes me back to drinking beers at uh, Hogshead. Uh, blows me away. Hogshead, by the way, is a brewery in Denver that is devoted to uh, Cascale. And my friends make fun of me all the time because, you know, when my friends, some of my friends have go to the UK, I keep talking about Cascale this, Cascale that, and the joke is, the running joke is, I'm the Cascale guy, Cascale, you know, blah, 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 whatever, it's a meme. Um, but yeah, just takes me that, back to that. Obviously, it's not replicated out of the can and blah, 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 but it shows this beautiful balance of these um, British ales. It's a nice kind of malt complexity, and then the hops are there too. So like, you know, for people that are, like, it, in German beer, you generally don't get it unless you're looking at pills or something, right? Like, you still get a hoppy character, too. So, like, you sort of see where this is derived or the British the British lineage of beers and styles sort of became American. Like, celebration, right? Like, multi, but also hoppy. And then, obviously, a whole different world of IPA and all this other stuff. But it's a, it's a multi-hoppy beer. Hmm. Oh, that's good. And then, like, I don't know how they make this beer, but it maybe seems like a touch of oxidative character, too, because, like, it's supposed to be an old ale, but I don't know. Um, just nice complexity. It's, like, toasty, butterscotchy, caramelly, lightly cocoa-y, but then, like, but then you can confuse with so many beers because there's, like, you can be Britain, you can be in the U.S., and, you know, you think about brown ale and Schwarzbier and, 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 and Metzen and, you know, all these other, uh, other styles, but then 
you get this bitterness that's just like not okay and you're like wow okay i gotta be in uk then i gotta be in uk right that's only five six mm, yeah that's good that's good i mean this is this is a beer i would just love to have on cask don't forget about this what, what, what's this packaging size um 15 ounces 49 i want 20 ounce imperial pints i mean four and a half is actually pretty big so it's like the better session abv is around like three two eight three five but hell give me 20 ounces of this and give me like two three of those oof good sessioning oof oof yeah it's kind of beer that i'm really enjoying these days so Just really nice and complex, tiny, 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 it's five, six, not a tiny beer. Just a really nice session beer. Really nice session beer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely revisit this. Uh, 94, 94, this is so good. So good. Takes an old peculiar. Don't, don't, don't sleep on this stuff. There's a reason why they've been making this stuff since 1827, Teakston. This is the most, the most famous beer. Rich, fruity, full, that's the other thing I get. Oh, oh, subtle black cherry and banana aromas. I don't know about the banana. But yeah, it could be some like um, stewed, stewed kind of banana breadiness kind of going on. I mean, they're really pushing the ester profile on that. But that's the other thing I did mention. There's a little bit of fruitiness on this. With those British yeast, you're going to get a little bit of like um, sweet dried cherry, a little bit of dried apple. Um, the apple for sure is a big one to get in a lot of the British ales. Just nice malt complexity, that woodsy bitterness that just comes in right there. Lingers on the palate. Delicious stuff. What'd I say? 94? 94. Takes an old peculiar. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.